We'll be going over IRS Form W-2, your wage and tax statement. Most uh, taxpayers are familiar with the Form W-2, uh, as should anyone if they are or have been an employee for any company or organization. This is the tax form that's issued to employees. However, in today's environment, uh, there may be kind of a blurry distinction between an employee and an independent contractor who would be paid on a Form 1099. You might have heard of Form 1099 workers or simply 1099 employees. So the big distinction is an employee receives a W-2 from their employer at the end of the tax year, and a, an independent contractor uh, will receive either a 1099 MISC or a 1099-NEC. Uh, and that designates them as not an employee. And there is a changing, uh, there is an evolving legal distinction uh, between employees and uh, independent contractors. Uh, for a lot of employees, they're, they're starting to challenge uh, their status as an, in, an independent contractor, and this is being played out in the courts. So if you do receive a Form W-2, this means you're an employee. Now, when we take a look at this tax form, uh, it's important to understand all of the aspects of it and how they might impact your tax situation. So we're going to break this down into three different sections. So if you look on the left-hand side of this form, you'll see these boxes that are outlined in letters A, B, C, all the way through F. Uh, I would consider this the employee and employer uh, information. So you're going to look this over for accuracy. You're going to make sure that your name and information is correct, uh, specifically because uh, this ties directly into your uh, uh, Social Security records. So you can see at the bottom of this, it says copy one for state, city, or local tax department. If we go up, you'll see that copy A actually goes to the Social Security Administration. So there can be up to six different copies of this form. Copy A, which is the first copy, goes directly to the Social Security Administration. Copy 1 is used if, you're state, if you live in a state or locality that's subject to uh, state or local income tax. Then we have copy B that you will file with your federal income tax return. Copy C... that goes into your tax records, copy D that stays with your employer's records, and then if you need it, copy 2 that gets filed with your city, state, or local income tax return. So let's go back to the pre-filled version for our hero John Doe today. Um, so when we go through this, uh, all of these copies are the same. I simply picked copy 1 at random and started pre-filling some of this information. So uh, the most important piece of information uh, is uh, in box A, your social security number. Uh, your employer should have this on file. This should have been part of your employment onboarding process, but you're gonna wanna make sure that this is correct every single year. So uh, box A and then box E, uh, you will want to make sure that it contains your correct address and as well as your name spelled correctly. If your name is exceedingly long, the most important part of this is your last name. And there are probably more spaces for last name uh, than there would be in other important uh, box uh, blocks such as uh, on your pay, pay statements and things of that nature. So you should expect that your complete name is uh, in box E, unless it's a very, very long name. In box B, you're going to see the employer identification number. This could be relevant if, you're, if you ever need that information uh, uh, for another tax-related issue. You can always pull your employer identification number of your employer uh, from your Form W-2. In box C is your employer's address, uh, and then uh, in uh, box F, uh, we have your address as well as your zip code. 
Now on the right hand side, we're going to talk about your federal tax information. And then on the bottom side, I filled in some state and local income tax information. This is a fictional scenario as our hero John Doe lives in Texas and Texas does not have a state income tax. So normally this would be blank. I will go over this for illustrative purposes. So in box one, you're going to you're, you're going to see the total uh, wages, tips, or other compensation that is uh, subject to federal income tax. So in this case, that's two hundred thousand dollars. It's not necessarily broken down into tips or anything. It's 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 a very long list of things could, that could possibly be treated as compensation, and we do break this down into a little bit more detail in our article. Suffice it to say, $200,000, we're reporting that. Uh, the employer reported $10,000 of federal income tax withholding. That comes out to about a 5% uh, uh, income tax withholding. So I'm going to guess right here, without knowing anything about John Doe's tax situation, he might need to update his tax withholding uh, by revising his Form W-4. Uh, just... In case you weren't aware, your employer uh, literally takes instruction from you as the taxpayer on how much federal income tax to withhold from your paycheck. They have no discretion other than what you tell them. So if you see this and it doesn't look like it's going to pass the sniff test, then you should update your W-4 uh, with your employer. Uh, in the show notes to this uh, video, I'll attach a link to another video we've produced about how you can... Uh, go about doing this with the IRS uh, income tax withholding uh, calculator online. It's fairly straightforward uh, and you, you can get a, a rough estimate of how you should change your Form W-4 and you can even print that out uh, to give to your employer. In box three, you'll see the Social Security wages and the first thing you'll notice is that this is different from box one and that's because Social Security wages are subject to what's called a wage base limit. That means every year your social security, uh, uh, you're, you're paying into the social security system up to a certain amount of earned income. And for 2023, that amount of earned income, that wage base limit was $160,200. Now in line, box four, we simply take 6.2% of that amount, which happens to be $9,932.40. That is the Social Security tax that your employer withheld. Now, a question that people may have is, what if they have uh, earnings from more than one employer? Uh, what if an employer withheld uh, extra Social Security tax for some reason above this limit? So there are a couple of things that you can do. Uh, so let me first explain what might happen if you have two employers. Uh, let's imagine that John Doe works for two employers and he makes $100,000 a year from each employer. Uh, they may withhold his Social Security tax at $100,000 and that would result you know, in a total of $6,200 for each employer or $12,400 total. Uh, so John Doe can't do anything with either employer about this, but he can uh, use both of his W-2s to report that he paid excess Social Security tax, and that would go into IRS Schedule 3. Uh, so he can report that, and he'll receive a tax credit uh, for the extra Social Security tax that was withheld. Now, if you have one employer that withheld uh, excess Social Security tax, uh, you cannot report that on Schedule 3. Instead, you would need to report that on IRA's Form 843 uh, as an excess withholding. Uh, and I'll put links to both Schedule 3 and uh, IRS Form 843 in the show notes so you can get a little bit more information. In Box 5, we're going to report Medicare wages and TIP income. This amount happens to be the same as in box one because uh, there isn't an income limit for social or for Medicare wages the way there's a wage base limit for Social Security. 
So in this case, all of John's $200,000 uh, was considered to be includable as Medicare uh, wages. And then his tax withheld on that is 1.45% or $2,900. Uh, if John was a tip worker, like if he worked at a bar or a restaurant, that, and he reported Social Security tips to his employer, then he would uh, see something in here uh, that basically uh, reports the amount of Social Security earnings that he had in tip income. Now, box seven and box three uh, combined should not exceed the Social Security wage base limit. So if he did have tip income from this employer, uh, he would not he would not necessarily see it because uh, he would uh, have already reached that social security wage base limit in box eight allocated tips refer to uh, tips that certain large food and beverage restaurant and uh, establishments uh, must allocate a certain portion of their income to all tip employees if they're not reporting sufficient tip income. So this is actually tip income that the restaurant is reporting back to their employees. Uh, since John's not a tip employee, he doesn't see anything in seven and eight. Line nine, there literally is nothing in the instructions. It doesn't even say reserved for future use. It's just this nice gray box. If John received dependent care benefits, then the total cost of those benefits would be reflected in box 10. So dependent care benefits could include uh, the fair market value of on-site dependent care. It could be reimbursements for dependent care that John went out and uh, had on his own. It could, be, it could be the amount that the employer recorded as dependent care uh, benefits uh, so that John could come to work. In line 11, uh, non-qualified plans, this would be something like a, a deferred compensation, a, a, a 457 plan. Uh, this reports basically distributions from those accounts. And the reason the Social Security, the only reason this exists is so that the Social Security Administration can determine uh, the amount of deferred compensation that should be reported for Social Security purposes in each year. Uh, so this doesn't really impact you directly when you're filing your Form 1040. It simply is uh, for the Social Security Administration's information. In boxes uh, 12A through 12D, these are uh, up to four different fields where your employer can enter uh, certain tax impacts to uh, your compensation. For example, and each of these has a, a code that's uh, specifically assigned by the Internal Revenue Service. So for example, box D refers to like a 401k um, uh, contribution. Uh, box V would be, um, uh, sorry, box W is is uh, is contributions to a health savings account. DD would be the employer cost of of health care. Uh, so, uh, health care that was provided to an employee and or uh, employee's family. This is not taxable. So, uh, the IRS instructions have a long list of codes. And we break those down in our article so you can actually determine. This is probably the biggest question that most taxpayers have is what do all these different codes mean? So we break these down into a little bit more user-friendly language in our article. In uh, box 13, you'll see three check marks. Statutory employee. Uh, basically, this would be an employee that under certain uh, circumstances is subject to FICA taxes, so Social Security and Medicare tax, but not necessarily federal tax. And there are certain uh, very specific uh, categories of those employees. Retirement plan, if you are covered by a retirement plan, either a 401k or a defined contribution plan or a defined benefit plan, uh, then 
this would be checked. And if you're receiving a Form W-2 from a third party that your employer has brought on to pay out sick pay under a program, then you would see this check here. Box 14 contains other information that your employer may choose to include here. Uh, so th this is completely voluntary and it's up to your employer's discretion. Uh, for example, ministerial earnings may be uh, captured here or like a housing allowance for rabbis and, and priests. Uh, this could be other elective contributions to other programs. And again, we, we cover this in a little bit more detail in our article. I'll briefly go over the state and local income tax information because it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you'll see the two-letter two designation for the state here in box 15, followed by the identification number assigned to the employer by the state government. You'll see wages and tips that are subject to state uh, income tax. This may be different from, uh, from box one. It depends on your state income tax laws. And then the amount of state income tax calculated. So this appears to be a, a flat 2% state income tax that I just made up for the state of Texas since it doesn't have any state income tax. And then uh, this locality name that I also made up, uh, any town Texas, a 1% local income tax uh, reflects $200,000 of local wages, translates into $2,000. So um, you should probably uh, double check these uh, this information against your pay statements. Uh, so uh, probably the easiest way to do that is to take your last pay statement of the year, or the second to last, and just run through it really quickly to make sure that you capture uh, everything and that everything looks uh, pretty close to normal. There may be some uh, rough bumps for people that are paid by uh, uh, semi or sorry bi-weekly where you might have a pay period that runs across two tax years but uh, this information should look like the summary information on your last pay statement of the year uh, plus or minus some uh, finagling you know you know on that last pay statement. So um, that's all we have for this video on better understanding your Form W-2. And again, we break this down into a lot more detail on our, uh, in our article. So if you want to read it, you can go to our website, uh, teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Form W-2, and you'll see our article. It's a comprehensive guide, and it'll break down all of these, uh, some of these codes and definitions for you. So... Uh, it will also put links to the article and all the other articles I mentioned in the show notes uh, uh, for your uh, education and benefit. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section. Thank you very much and have a great day.